Steve Langan is a fellow I ran into 10 or 12 years ago, first time at a Nebraska Writers or Book Festival at Creighton University. It was my first real exposure to his work. I think one of the last times I mentioned to his wife that there was a, a reading at UNO, and then they had a, a book release party afterward at their home, which was a lot of fun. I got to meet a lot of people that spend more time in Omaha than Lincoln. And uh, so that was just a way of getting to know a few more individuals and, and have a good time. They had good food, too, as a matter of fact. That was good stuff. I enjoyed that. Thank you, Liz. So, I'll turn the mic down. Steve, as you notice in the bulletin, has a, a new book out. That's important. He's going to read a few things from that. I think what has really kind of uh, always interested me is that he's worked on the Seven Doctors Writing Project over the years, and I've been to some readings where some of these fellows and women have showed up, and the whole idea of putting this together uh, for a profession that we tend to think is stoic and calm and detached, and they're just bottled up energy as we are, and they have such responsibilities, and such gifts and such demands on their time. So it, it, was, it was good that Steve took that long-term commitment to work on a project such as that. And he, he did mention that he's going to be having a Seven Doctors project reading here at Lincoln in the next few months. So forming a group. Forming a group. Oh, you're going to form we a group here, help. too. We need your help. We will do that. We will publicize. It'll be 14 do doctors, right? Seven and seven? That's okay. I like the whole idea. Seven and seven. Beyond... <laughs> okay. That works. Beyond that, I will let Steve explain a few more things about himself and read, and uh, he will take questions. He may not do anything with them other than wad them up and put them in the corner, but that's, that's creative. The creative anachronism, right? Okay. No more from me. Steve Langan. Ciao. so honored that Karen Kuntz uh, dedicated her a few of her wood blocks to this collection of my poems. Here's one of them that came out in a letterpress version done by Denise Brady and I was uh, happily the third person on that uh, and the least essential person. But they also developed a little uh, trade edition here. <clears throat> which includes just the poems, which is for sale. I can leave some out. I'm, I'm not sure how we're organizing that. But, uh, I'll read a few from, from this collection and a few new ones uh, and hand it over uh, to Marina. Ugly Kids. Some people are so ugly when they're sleeping you want to take their temperature. And some people, it has been explored shamelessly, are so beautiful lying on the beach, so perfect, you cannot assume they lack depth or altruism. Kissinger got laid a lot. Women tracked him down, and one even bribed the Secret Service just for a chance to talk with him on Miami Beach, under an umbrella, in his large eyeglasses. Power is an aphrodisiac, he said. I looked up aphrodisiac. I looked up power. My sister said I smiled like a clown. That was 1979. There is no paradise to be found. Other days I was a chimpanzee. I could run all day and climb and scratch. There was this kid in our neighborhood who, so impeccably ugly, did not care what he said or did or to whom. I admired him. Plus, he was the first on our block to smoke. 
with no apparent fear of getting caught, which says a lot about a boy's character. <laughs> 25 years later, many of these people start to come into your life. Blame technology. Consider yourself warned. All but the one who truly fascinated us, over whose whereabouts, opinion, and future we speculated endlessly back when there was nothing else to do but think. I often mention that a uh, rancor, irritation, resentment is a pretty good starting place for a writer. <laughs> This is called The Originals. <clears throat> His trying all of a sudden so hard to clearly mimic the lofty new originals as a way to demonstrate he was truly paying attention to the culture the last 30 years made our little group wince. I winced, and I haven't winced. Really, eyes and teeth winced in a decade. I think I blushed. I know I sighed. I paced frantically, and I looked out the kitchen window, though I couldn't tell you the first thing I saw up there. I hollered at Eileen. Eileen, I hollered, come out here and look at this bullshit. But she was at work, at the hospital. She's always liked kids, even sick ones. She knows how to talk to them. Eileen doesn't need to stick to the the text like I do, the little onesie twosie questions such as school, which, subject, favorite, she knows how to listen, too. Thank God I have Eileen in my life, but I need her now. Or someone who understands you don't just wake up one morning, walk outside to grab the paper, and get shot in the head. Only those who commit entirely to the life die in the sudden gunfire they wait their whole lives for. And even when we realize the love-hate on our knuckles never varnishes off, even when we've almost forgotten the name of the cause we are going out to fight for, even if they slaughter our babies and cut off their earlobes as a symbol, we never turn or run away. Anything else I tell Eileen is child's play. This, this poem is called uh, Palinode with Little Sister Crouching. And I do this all the time. I didn't know there was a name for it, where you write about something and then change your mind and write about something different kind of a poet's way, if I think about it. So this is called <clears throat> Palinode with Little Sister Crouching. Goodbye to the radio in the background on our oversized speakers, to tears and crying on one shoulder or for effect, to the fundamental tricksters who drive the system. From an early age, I was taught there is a pattern to which one is expected to hold. A mother making the shh sound, four finger crossing lips to the tip of the nose, and the child was being mostly good anyway. Goodbye, sorry rust on the pickup's fender. I hope we never see him again, rude as he was, and inclined to boast about his conquests. Three days after he left, my sister was terrified. While the price of X rises, Y plummets, goodbye. To the pages of catalogs dumped in a ditch, to the evocation of sin in a thousand delicious forms, if misunderstanding is cousin to knowledge, goodbye to the prayers we were taught to say, the time we take to kneel and reflect, goodbye to the sticky chalice on the marble altar, to caution, too, and to artifice, to bold erratics, 
Goodbye dancing while thinking only of dancing. Goodbye spitting gum out my window. Friday night on the town square. Billy, not Mark, is working the counter tonight. My sister says, drive me by one more time. I think I saw Mark. And I say, no, it's Billy. And she says, drive me around one more time. I promise I'll pay for gas. I'll do your chores. I'm going to read one more from this <clears throat> collection and a few new ones. This is called Three Observations About Women. I can be a little critical. <laughs> Three Observations About Women in a haiku. <laughs> the haiku softens it. <laughs> <laughs> What's softer than a haiku? <laughs> Women don't seem to need to lie nearly as much to each other as men lie to other men and especially to women. As I age, I admire more how women give compliments, multiple compliments, the range specificity, lack of restraint. I love your name, Carla. My beautiful friend is also named Carla. We had a conversation about fun. An ex, a man, said, if it's not fun, why would you do it? A stance of exes I've always admired. Women love him, too, for this and many other reasons. Our beautiful world, we had all the lights turned off, the sound muffled too. I just want to read a few new things. I'm going to try to find the most despairing ones. Then I sprinkle in a little hope, because I can't help myself. This poem is called Background Noise. <clears throat> Depending on the situation, I make myself small or large. You have to learn to shape yourself to fit the circumstance, the guru said, and to know this, to feel it immediately. To show him I was up to the task, that I'd read and studied, I bled a little from my left arm and just walked away, dripping blood on the carpet, his assistant lifted like one of many veils and handed to the housekeeper. There is a history of this country devoted to toughness, and there is a history devoted to tears, to sobbing. I wasn't sure what to do the first time I encountered someone in real pain. I think I slowly moved away, speechless, and walked down the white corridor. But this is not the time to suddenly become reflective. When I ask my friends which they prefer, at home after a long day, background noise or silence, it's about half and half. And I wonder sometimes which of these, music or quiet, will prevail. <clears throat> Nine postcards from America. It cannot be easy to desire paradise so completely, but have a job where every day you spill a little of the pig's blood in your own. I was reminded of the story our friend told us about his visit to the kosher plant, suit and tie, official business, when the rabbi, blade in hand, turned and said, your turn? Wanting to make a difference, boy becomes man, and that's when all the trouble begins. 
Two acrobats with Cirque du Soleil are in love with the same woman, a choreographer. Those bright summer dresses, her breasts and bare kneecaps, and her clear command, wearing the earpiece. There are the stories we agree we never want told. Good luck, little dreamer. Twirl, twirl, one more time, and now look who's dizziest. No one, not in the human world or the animal, has replaced desire. It would be so much easier if someone would. Why is it so loud, eternity? You put on the mask, expecting to need to be wary of the sharks, but it's the mask itself that's infected. At the end, Given my resistance so far, and the validation many of you have given me for it, I will probably be in love with the ambulance driver, the orderly, the priest. I will be in love with the cafeteria food, the last rites, the hallucinations. I've been working with a lot of healthcare folks and physicians uh, over the last nine years, and it's crept into the work. I just noticed that at the end of the last poem. And I don't mean to sound coy, I mean, I just noticed that. And uh, <clears throat> as Rex said, we're aiming to form a group, a Seven Doctors Project here. It's not limited to physicians or healthcare workers. Anyone can join. Rex has my contact information. These are Rex's best friends. We'll get together and, and see if we can't form a Seven Doctors Project together. Janie Gibalisco, Paul Hansen Clark, Maria Nazos, and I, Amy Pletner over here, uh, want to bring this work to you, which is portable, condensed, creative writing for the community. Figuring out how to raise some money to do that, bringing some people together, uh, Dr. Hutchins is back there. He's going to be helpful to us. He's our aim. So we'll get back to you with more on that. And maybe before too long, we can do a reading right here uh, with you from that group, or somewhere with you from that group. Uh, this is called, <clears throat> last thing I'll read, it's called From Social Media to Death. Someone disrespected him on Facebook and there was the time he broke out the front window of all three cars because he could not be certain which ex I tried to conceal from my kids the fact that everything that can be said has been said about everything. When my son left for boot camp, I found his notebooks, mostly drawings and cartoons and a few words, including paradise with an arrow. I know my children will visit me one day. Wash your hands, and if you touch the body, wash them again. In the putrid wards, all that matters is the call button. <laughs> <laughs>